we have folklore surrounding <laughs> ours. It's like the oh, boiler is sold people. and there's a valve. And if we open the valve, we just don't know what will happen to the valve if we try to open it. <laughs> no, not it or... yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll get rolling here. We can get everybody else. Yeah. All right, so my name is Jeff Bannister. Uh, I am the founder of uh, North Bend Consulting. Um, I used to run Food Matters Market for the last few years. Uh, so what my job is, um, is a, a leverage experience and AI to transform small businesses and nonprofits oh, wow. while elevating neurodiverse leadership. So I am myself neurodiverse, I have ADHD, so uh, when I got really digging into AI, I found it was a huge tool for me to move forward with. So, um, Our pictures are okay, excuse me. Please, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, in the past, uh, I was in the Coast Guard. I worked for a studio in Fort Worth as I got out of art school as an art director. Started my own production company. I worked uh, loss prevention for Macy's and got in fights over Keurigs. Uh, <laughs> uh, I worked at a couple of these independent uh, natural food stores I ran, and I also did freelance work for PDF Game Stops, Spanish Red Bulls. So I have a pretty wide breadth of experience doing different things. Um, I'm one of the few people who does marketing and graphics and animations and stuff, but also has work operations in retail. So um, it's a weird mix, but it comes together. For me, so. You didn't actually work at GameStop. No, I did, I did all their uh, GameStop TV for like two years. Oh, okay. Yeah, so all those all this clean source stuff. I was a manager when it was electronics. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, right, right, right. I forgot that. That's right. Fancy. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, I, I'm in North Bend. I'm the vice president of SparkPoint, which is the second generation of Blue Zone. So that's our next step to, for the whole county. Um, I'm a certified score mentor. I'm on the board of the chamber. And I also started a BSSD, which is a uh, business owner uh, group that was looking for workforce housing. So we're pushing to try to get to workforce housing. Um, it is an ongoing fight. <laughs> we keep pushing for that. So a um, little about that. So today, it's mostly going to be exercises. Um, we're going to get into chat GPT. And these are the four kind of main examples we'll talk about. Uh, limited bandwidth. So uh, most people I work with don't have a lot of extra people working. So I have to figure out how to do things collateral duties. Uh, so that, um, remote connections. So reaching out to people in your community um, through social media in other ways. Uh, resource scarcity, we'll talk about a grant, take a grant application, upload it, and then we'll answer it and write a grant letter from that. Woo! Right? <laughs> and then extra use and skills gap. So that one, we're going to take a job posting. We're going to take three applicants and compare them against each other and get an objective score um, of what their resume is against the job posting. And then we're going to... Um, create some uh, interview questions from that too. So it's a pretty nice little way to get that done. So let's get out into chat GPT here. And forgive me, I'm not only a new setup, but I'm on a PC, which really throws me off, but we'll get this. <laughs> All right, so this is a, we're gonna do, this is a financial analysis. Um, what I've done here is <clears throat> just to hold this open, I'll show you this. So I just put in here, uh, hey team, get ready for a live uh, dive into Apple Q3 Financial later today. We'll summarize key numbers and then simplify them for different audiences. Uh, stay tuned and check out the attached Q3 report. So I just primed it a little bit to hold this open. And it already has, it already come back and says ready to go. Okay, so um, before we get into this, uh, there's some things that uh, I do before I start using chat GPT. And the first one is uh, what's called custom instructions. So this is on the um, this is on the 4.0 version, but the nice thing about this is that there's two sections here. The first one is what would you like ChatGPT to know about you to provide better responses. So this is where I tell ChatGPT about myself, my business, uh, my brand, writing style, which I've developed inside of ChatGPT by putting lots of my writing in there and just working through stuff. And then I say, please export out a developed brand writing style, and then that's what I keep as a prompt. So I do that. And then the next part down here is, how would you like chat to be key to respond? So inside of here, I um, always ask it to deliver precise, well-researched responses. I ask for citations, if possible. Um, and I also ask for reasoning on why it gives good answers. So that helps me kind of quickly decide if it's a good response or not. Uh, and then I can go check the citations and make sure it's, it's also good. So that is overall they, of all of my good? Yeah, yeah, okay. really, yeah, yeah. And some of that's just the training, which is the next part. So this is a little bit of training through your whole 
count, right? So every thread you open up already starts with knowing about you and, the, and how you want to write. So, um, let me show you this real quick. You have to pay for that feature? The, the, for the for, yeah, for that custom structure part. But everything else I'll show you today, you can do in the free version. So, all the, with this copy and paste. So, um, so that's the first part. That's the training. Now, if I go into a brand new chat, just say, tell me what you know about me and my brand. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is very hard to type. So it already has uh, my company, writing style, authenticity, cultural sensitivity, professionalism, um, and then it gives the three components of the diverse elements. So this is kind of what, and what I, how I got here is I had a big, long description of my writing style, like paragraph and paragraph long. And I put in there and said, okay, we only have this many characters. Can we keep refining it and get it down to as concise as possible and keep as much information? So that gets me a really good start on all of my problems. Right off the bat, I already know this about me and how I want it to interact. Okay. So, and we could have that saved in our Google Docs and just prop plop that in every time we start Yeah, a I keep a library plan. of those things and just like, and then I'll do a revised one and just have them offline somewhere and I can start any new thread right where I left off. Um, and then you have a, you know, if you go into a prompt, you go in there and say, hey, this is what we're going to do today. <clears throat> These are the processes. I want you to do this and then prompt me for that type of things. So you're going to set up kind of some basic instructions. So if we go to, let's go here. And <clears throat> so what I've got here, so this is Apple's Q3 financials, uh, truncated. Okay, so we're gonna take. Oh, let's see. Select all. Copy this. We're just gonna go over to our thread. I'm gonna paste this in. So copy and paste in the free version, you have 4,000 characters at a time you can put in. In the pro version, uh, the plus version, you can do 8,000, but you can do it in segments, right? So if it's a long, if it's long, you can just keep adding it. And pretty much what you say is like, I have this, I'm gonna upload this in four segments. Here's the first one. And then you just keep going online to add the rest of them. Mm -hmm. Then go, can go back and compile and let's talk about the whole thing, okay? So there's ways to get around the restrictions there. <laughs> All right, so now I've got to paste it in here. I've said what I kind of wanted to do, so. Run this, <clears throat> and what it's going to do is it's going to summarize. Yes, uh huh. Does, does, does the limits does that does that vary from version three to version four? So three point five. So three point five is always going to be four thousand and ninety one. I think is the character, and then the plus the four point zero is eight thousand. But the only the uh, that's four point zero. But if you're plus on three point five, it's still for that model. So cool thing is, uh, analyze summarizes analyzes this. Um, it does it at a very high level, which is great. But um, if I have somebody who isn't doesn't have financial experience, uh, the next step is retargeting. So I think retargeting might be the most powerful thing inside of AI. Is that once you have information, you can now retarget that to different groups, different markets, different experience levels, different learning types, right? So um, what I'll do here first is I'll ask for a simplified version. So um, retarget for a person with no financial experience. All right, so now it's gonna take out the jargon, simplify it, uh, kind of explain terms. So this is really great in the fact that there's really nothing you can't break down into a version that you can understand and work that back and forth. Now, the next thing I can do, let me stop this. How do you know the which terminology to utilize? So, what's that? I'm just wondering when we got into this world. <laughs> it happened really quick. It happened so fast. On my so it would be rudimentary. <laughs> yeah. and this is 10 years cool. later, it would be. I know. So, um, basically, there's no wrong way to ask it. This is just what, for trial and error, I found works the best. But mm. the coolest thing about ChatGPT is if you don't know how to do something, ask it, and it'll tell you the best way to probably do it. Yeah. It's really crazy. So, um, they can write code now. Um, it can pass the bar, 4.0 can pass the bar, can pass the medical entrance exam as well. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of information there. So, and then, so you have that baseline information and then everything you train in, you know, you can train in all the stuff you want to talk about in threads, right? Uh, the next step that is coming, I think they're calling it Jarvis, uh, will be a 
contained version that could be behind a firewall. So like a hospital could use it behind a firewall and still be in HIPAA laws, but then be able to utilize all this uh, mechanics to pull information and, and run through data. So it's pretty cool. Now, the other cool thing I can do is- uh, Did you say Jarvis? I believe that's what they're calling it, yeah. Yeah, it was a like, butler for the- Right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Avengers. <laughs> or, uh, so I'm not gonna retarget this to a middle school student. And often this comes back with uh, lemonade stands. Let's see what it comes with today. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. I was so, wondering if we could Michael Scott it. No, tell me like a four-year-old. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So there's no limit to how you can ask this to deliver, right? So I often say optimize these tasks for someone with ADHD, stuff like that. It'll break it down into smaller tasks. So, so really cool stuff like that. <clears throat> so. You can see how powerful this is just in analyzing data just right off the bat. There's no real, the nice thing about this is there's not really any external factors to this. You're saying, here's the information, analyze, summarize it, give you that. Now you can retarget that. The entire library isn't even being used for that, this part, because you're just inputting data and asking it to analyze it and output it. So this is super powerful, and the retargeting can be used for almost anything. So uh, even marketing. So if you're marketing a target group here, you say, Great, can we retarget it to this generation in this location? And it will do that. So let's look at the next one here. All right, so job applications. <clears throat> Perfect. Okay. So I did a little more prompting on this one. Uh, I have a, I created, so I created a job posting using AI because I wanted a generic one that would, you know, with all the details. So I had to create that. And then I created three demo resumes with uh, cover letters. So mm -hmm. everything I'm using was created from AI. We'll go back, pop back in there, but obviously this will work. Um, <clears throat> so I have a job description. I'm gonna first upload that job description. Then I'm gonna upload the three applications and it's gonna do an objective score off of what the qualifications are and what the requirements are. So let's start with here. All right, so here's my job posting. So now I'm just posting in the job posting. So um, if you're looking for a job and you have job postings, pull that in, have your resume in there and say, do I qualify for this job? Is there, how should I, and then you, how should I write the cover letter? How should I format my application to best fit this job posting, right? Let's see where we're at here. <laughs> All right, so now it's asking, so I told it that once it has its uh, job posting to ask me for the, the resumes. So now let's pull those up. I've ingested the details. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so like I said, this, a lot of this is copy and pasting. Um, when you get, in, if you use the, the plus version, they do have a, a advanced uh, data analysis where you can actually upload PDFs or Excel spreadsheets and you can do more data that way. But you can really get around anything with the copy and paste part. So let's paste this first one in. And what did you tell it to make it want to do the objective scoring? So I just said, I'm going to, I, and there's no, like, keep in mind, there's no wrong way to do this. You're saying, you're just going to say what you're going to do in a conversational manner. You want to think of this as a teammate and not a computer. Okay? So you want to ask it to do things. A crazy thing about that is, so unscientifically, I was trying where if I treated it nicer and said, thanks and great, we do this. Ah, that's good, but I want to do that. I got better results. And I thought that was kind of crazy, right? Like, there's no way. A study just came out and said, oh, yeah, that's exactly how it works. The thing is, it's not through altruism. It's not because it's being nice and you're being nice. It's because it's referencing how you talk to it to look for answers. So it's in context. So if you ask it in a nice way, in a more professional way, it's going to find more professional answers. So it's weird that that parallels evolution to get altruism in, in a computer and a person, right? So <laughs> I'm not crazy. At least that's not kill us. <laughs> As long as we treat them nice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm such a people pleaser. I even have to help, you know, be nice to the AI. So. I'm going to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. We got, let's see, we got that one in, right? What's in there? Okay, great. So let's post in this one. Nope. I'm going to do this one too. 
Application is totally in Spanish. I know kitchen Spanish, but the last time I ran this, I had somebody speaking and they said it was very close to translation. So now we're going to go and we're going to, okay, uh, this one uh, is in Spanish. Please translate first. Um, and one thing I do, and uh, is when, if I'm in the middle of a, a sentence like this and I have something I wanted to, like I'm giving directions, then there's stuff to input. I usually put quotation marks around it, just some way that I'm breaking. Here's the instructions. Here's what I want you to do. So I found that to be very effective. A separation. Uh, yeah, just some kind of separation. So let's put this in here. All right. So it will translate this first, so I can actually read it, and then it will do the scoring here. So let me put this. <clears throat> This is the tough thing about doing this live is you still have to wait for it to process. So if you're on timeline, like, please, please process quicker. <laughs> this is pretty fast. It's pretty fast. Do you know how much time I feel like I've wasted in my life? I know, I know, I know. <laughs> and when I'm talking to small business, like nonprofits and small businesses, they're like, we spend most of our time doing this. I'm like, well, maybe if you can just knock that out and now you can do higher end stuff and get some actual progress done. Right? All right, so now I'm gonna say- hey, Question, um, question. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's okay. You sure? I, I got to type this in anyway. <laughs> yeah, I may or may not be relevant. Okay. Table. So, uh, see that I'm not really saying how to score this. I'm just saying score objectively. Um, and this will sometimes come out of on like a score of zero to five or one zero to ten. I had one the other day. It was like you either got a point or you didn't, and it went down the line and then gave you a score against the job posting and your resume. So. Let's see what this does here. So really the, the, the limitation to chat GPT and all these large language models is like your imagination and how you could think about using this with this and how can I optimize this and put it into here and do you know something different. Yeah. All right, so now it makes it really nice table format. Uh, you can have it export out uh, markdown. You can um, do code, JavaScript, all kinds of stuff. Um, it can bring you pretty much do almost anything. So, I messed up with posting, but yeah. So it's part two of them because I, I think I messed up on the um, copying and pasting here. But you can see that we've got. Yeah. All right. So it did just from that. I didn't give any instructions other than to score it. It took out these criteria and scored them and gave you an objective score of who's more qualified without talking to the person at all, just kind of having an objective. Now, um, I will say that objective is still relative, right? Like we all know that biases are maybe, uh, are always gonna be embedded in this just because how it was, how the library was trained. So just to be aware of that, um, is that it's, it's very white. Oh, okay. Right, so there's really, but yeah, I try to compensate that by training it and doing my okay. custom, but just know that there, it's not completely objective. Right. Because it's only as good as the data is trained on. You use your imagination and creativity to kind of filter. Yeah, and just you, gotcha. don't, you don't want to take it for you. You right. want to check in the next. Right. Well, you know, yeah. Thank you. Um, one thing I always say is like, if you're not a lawyer, ChatGPT is not going to make you a lawyer. Right. If you're an okay lawyer, it might make you a better lawyer. But it's, if you have to kind of know what you're talking about, because it will spit stuff out and you, you have no context and you put it out there, you. <laughs> pretty bad, you know? right. So um, it's just an enhancer. It's not like a, you can learn it though if you want to hey, teach me right. how to do this. You can get there, but just zero to one, you can just get you know look completely professional without some chat talk. So um, now we do this. Like uh, so, here's the other thing we do. Uh, let's do right. Let's create some interview questions for Maria. Uh, let's do tar. We'll do targeted 
general and role specific. So when we were hiring a new staff at the chamber, um, this is kind of how I helped is that, first of all, we did a, a, this, and then I gave them a list of questions to ask that were specific to the person applying, what their resume was against the job posting. Um, it gives you those targeted questions that are more like, you know, diving into someone and how they think and how they, and what they've done in the past. You can do personality questions, pretty much you just ask it and it'll, it'll pop out some questions for you. So I don't know about you, but I've worked in a lot of places that have those forms you ask, those things are, 15 minutes of time doesn't make any sense to the person you're talking to, and it feels very formulaic. So this is a nice way to just go, hey, I know who you are. I know what your job is. Here's what I like to know more about. So you can see how this can be really powerful in, in job interviews and, and for hiring. Anybody have any questions about that? Did you, did your question? It was, it was about the, the quotation marks. That was, oh, we come back to that. Yeah, so just pretty much like any way you can break up instructions to the data you want it to analyze or what you want to do. And it could be parentheses, quotation marks, so uh, it could be a dash, just something that separates, separate. bracket, whatever. Yeah, but yeah. syntax you use doesn't dictate a different function. No, no, okay. no. Yeah, so all right, so let's go into grant application. All right, so obviously with nonprofits I work with, this is a huge one. Heck yeah. Um, I mean, it's hard enough to find the grant, so that's, I mean, you can, and if you have the web enabled, Version 4.0 does have web enabled, so you can go ahead and search out for them as well. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, the cool thing about the web enabled is you can say, search the web for something, or you can say, go to this website, scrape through it, and find this information from that website, and it will do that. So if I have a new client, I go to the website, I, I scrape all the information from there, I get their writing style, I know what they're doing, and I walk into the meeting knowing their business and having all my stuff, the thread ready to go, I can work right live with them. Be like, all right, let's do this and start popping stuff out. So can you clarify for a minute? So one of the limitations up until what you just said for me was that it was scraping just from 2021 back. Right. That's not true now. Right. With the 4.0, so it has. It, it mm -hmm. will scrape current yesterday's stuff, today's stuff. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. a big deal. It's huge. Yeah. yeah. It really makes it incredibly powerful. Like, I'm still like, how else can I use this every day? Like, now that I can go out to live and pull data, demographics, like market research. I mean, like, I have a client, I do entire market research with uh, generational gaps, what generations use what platform the most, what social media platforms I can use to get, like all those things to be encapsulated into this. And I'll show you. But there's this. still, I really appreciate you being candid about the kind of implicit and bias still yeah. like instilled in this For because sure. of that manufacturing, which of course room for improvement, but also like it's imperfect, perfect, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the world, right? I mean, right. It gets exactly. a little better, but it's still yeah. not right. So, you know. <laughs> Thank um, you for that. But being aware of it is right. the biggest part. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so here we go. So basically I'm saying uh, in this one, that I have a grant application packet. Uh, I'm going to be uploading the packet first, and then um, and then I want it to wait, and uh, and then I'm going to uh, it's going to prompt me for it's going to give me the questions that I need to fill out from the grant, mm -hmm. and then I'm going to I'm going to do answers now. I'll show you that part. So let's let's see. Uh, all right. So again, I created this um, using ChatGPT to kind of make me a fake grant packet. But it's got all the details that one would have, like uh, terms and conditions, confidentiality, all that. So let's go in here. I'll copy this. Oh. A lot of copy and paste in this. Yeah. <laughs> I dig it. Yeah. All right. So again, taking out that hand crank stuff, I having to go through and you know break it out into every, you know, all the asks. So I also use this in like. I get long emails from a client that has a bunch of asks for me. I'll throw it through there and say, okay, what are the asks in this email? Break it down into a to-do list, stuff like that. That will help me get over that hurdle of starting on something. Mm -hmm. That's usually my executive function problems, like getting started on something. So um, it breaks it down into like much more digestible information in this packet, right? So it's great right off that. And then as that's running, let's pull up. Now, so this is, um, what you could do in this prompt is let's go back to prompt for a second. What you do in this prompt is uh, say let's see here. All right. So let's say give me all the questions I need to answer. So while I was doing this, I'm talking about this. So what I've found is that so I have these, so inside of a thread, it remembers everything you worked on this thread, right? Mm. Great. But if you want to start a new thread. You're not starting from scratch, but you're only starting with your custom instructions, 
right? Right. So what I've gotten to do is like in a thread, and uh, threads usually have one capability. So like one does the image generation, and another. So they don't like they're not multi-functional. So you okay. have to have different threads. Right, 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 right. So for each client, I have a thread. Like I have threads upon threads. Upon right. Threads. Right. So, but I want to start a new thread, and like say you lose one or you can't find it. So what I'll do is I'll go to the last one I worked on. I say, okay, create me a priming prompt for a new thread that talks about everything we've done so far and makes it so I can pick up where we left off in this thread in a new thread. Right. It creates that prompt. I save that. I put it in a new thread. I can just create threads and create threads and create threads. So that can be some continuity with that, right? So you guys have questions. Now, if I was working in a thread, uh, this is my nonprofit. I've been working in this thread. It knows all about me. It knows uh, what our missions are, what our projects are. I can answer these questions by saying, hey, answer all these questions you know, and then ask me for ones you don't know. We'll fill them out, right? That'd be, that's, yeah, I would do this. Uh, you can also just go, um, I can say, I'm going to answer section one. See, I'm, okay, so I'm going to answer section one, and you go one, answer the question, two, answer the question, three, answer the question, enter. You know, so you can do that process too. Um, so what I have here, just for time-wise, I have all the answers. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to copy this, paste this in. So these are answers you generated? Like the... well, yeah, so I took um, Habitat for Humanity, and I kind of used them as a basis. So I went and scouted their site and pulled their projects they're working on. So I kind of did that bit and just answered the questions. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's see here. So, all right, so now it's filled out. So, um, Obviously, you can copy and paste this into your application. You can, if you're in the pro version, you could export out a Word document. You can export out a PDF. You can do all that from here. But here's the cool thing now. Okay, so great. We know all this. Um, can you create me an outline for our grant letter? I can't spell it. It's keyboard. All right. So this is the way I usually write. With ChatGPT, is I, I have an idea, a brainstorm idea, but um, I want an outline that that gives me over that executive <laughs> function thing again. I have a starting point. It's just going to give me what I need to answer, structure, all that stuff. Um, and then what I normally do is I'll have it write a first draft, which I'll show you in here. Um, but once I I do any changes to the structure, I can say I don't move this, you know, I don't like that, change this, you know, that type of thing in the structure. Then I say write me a draft. <clears throat> And we'll do that next. And then I start working section by section on the paragraph. So I pull them back in and say, okay, that, I don't really like that. Let's do this. Or I'll just write something off and go, can we incorporate this into that? Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, can, can we just optimize the flow of that? Have we repeated ourselves? You can just ask it that and refine it. Okay. So you're not generating answers from the library. You're just giving it the answers and then optimizing it to the best flow and conciseness in here. So let's just do a draft so you can see. Create a... Now, so remember that since you, you've given it its whole application packet, it already knows what the answers, it, you know, what the questions, it knows the questions it asks, it knows what the it answer should be, like the format of those. So it's going to do this in an optimal way to present yourself to this, this grant uh, application. <clears throat> so pretty cool. So like I said, um, I wouldn't ever take this and send that out as my work, because that is, I mean, it's still the answer we put in, but this is not good enough for me as far as like to make it mine and not just chat GPT. But it's a starting point. Right. And for me, if I get past that starting point, well, I mean, I'm down pretty much that. You know, once I get that done. So this is great for like clients who just don't know where to start, don't know how to move forward with something. This can get them over that one hurdle and then they can move forward. So I think you can see that pretty, pretty useful in a lot of different ways. And like these aren't just limited to, you know, these examples are just kind of show you the processes I use that can be used in a lot of different things. So keep that in mind. All right. One's a fun one. All right. So we're going to do a social media campaign, again, for Habitat for Humanity. Um, and I've just said, um, so I, I went, so I used the web version. I went out and did market research for Transmitting County. I'll pull it up in a second here. Um, and it has a, let me show you that, actually. All right, 
So um, I've got population, uh, and this is all off of 2020. Uh, actually, some of these are even soon. I did 2020 that found new information. Um, I've got it in um, generational breakdown. I've got recommended social media platforms for community engagements. I've got economic uh, landscape, consumer behavior. And then I've also got uh, a local influence with community leaders. So I, when I just said, hey, look and find who's me, who, you know, I think Angela Owens is in here, Michael Victor Smith, Sarah Hankey, Kyrie, all those people that, you know, are in all the groups, right? So it came out with all that. So this would be nice that if you wanted to have partnerships on your media campaign, you'd already have these people kind of, you know, to go talk. Um, so I'm going to take this and I'm going to copy and paste this into a prompt here. All right. So I just said I want to do a three month uh, social media campaign. Um, and my goals, and I put my goals in here, like what I wanted to do with this campaign. So now I'm just going to put in these demographics. So right off the bat, it's going to give me my objectives, target audience. So this, this is kind of just repeating what you put back in there. And now I'm going to ask it for Based on the organization, Habitat for Humanity, and the demographics I just put in, what should our target market be for this social media campaign? Okay, so let's start that up here. See the screen, I'm just a mess. Single star again. It still picks it up. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Spelling it kind of it's in context, right? So it's right. not um it makes me look smarter than I am sometimes. Target uh market persona. So um if you have your uh, target market persona, it's pretty much how when you're marketing, it's really hard to talk to a whole audience when you're, you're thinking about who you're talking to. So what you want to do is bring that down into a single person a name, uh, who they are, where they live. And when you're writing your messages, it's always gonna be to this person. And you're gonna reach that market by talking to this person, right? So the cool thing is like, now I have this, I can save this as a persona. Once it's done here, I'm gonna take this persona. I'm gonna put it into um, a DALL-E enabled version, which is the text to image generator. And I'm gonna have a generate image for this persona. So I have a picture with the persona, right? All right, so great, let's do this. Now, Community engaged Carol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we all know who she is. Okay, come on. Are you going to do that right now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go press the handy cam button. Is this a is the visual a free service? The visual is it's the yeah uh, Dolly is available. Uh, it's an it's another uh, you can test it on the like a Discord server you can play with it on. But now inside of here it actually optimizes your prompts and everything. So you just ask it without having to make it all engineered and make it you know laid out the way you want it to. So let's copy this. Here. Oh shoot, I know that. So let's just copy this. Now we're going to go into a. Well, I copied everything. Come on. Where's my Mac right now? Okay. Copy this. Now we're going to go and make a new chat, and I'll show you the kind of the options. So 3.5 is the free version. It's way faster than this one. It's just not as um, sophisticated. It's just a, like a step below. But um, you'll still get really good results out of 3.5, and it's a great way to try stuff out. And I would say, if you haven't done anything, go and just brainstorm. Say, I, I want to make a title for this project I'm working on. Can we brainstorm some ideas and just see how it works? It's really simple to use. So um, that's the 2.5. Um, on 4.0, there's a default version, which you can. So another thing I've been doing lately is I'll, I'll take an image, 
I'll upload that image. I'll say, describe this image in great detail, in exhausting detail, describe this image. And it'll give me a long context of what the image is. I'll take that, the description, putting it into a text and image generator and see if I can get the generated image to match the original ah. image. <laughs> I can get pretty close. I can get pretty close. Um, and then you have the browse with Bing. So this is the online one. So you can go out to the live website. Advanced data analysis, that's where you can upload PDFs. You can also export out PDFs or documents or Excel worksheets, all that. Um, plugins, there are hundreds and hundreds of plugins. Usually, how the, they're all third party, uh, but usually how it works is a plugin will come out to do a function, and then about a month later, ChatGPT Chat will have an enabled one in line with it. So it's a cool way to try out new things, and it usually gets built into the system. Uh, then Dolly is the one we're going to use. And I'm not even going to prompt it. I'm just going to say, create a um, high-end 3D animation style. Okay. Oh, man. I think Thomas Wolf used chat GPT. Exhaustive detail. He's <laughs> done <laughs> like three pages describing yeah. a coat. <laughs> persona. Okay. This case is in. All right. So these are little things like, you know, uh, I'm doing a campaign for Bethany County School Education Foundation, and we're doing a, uh, the Creative Classroom Grants. And I want to use picture kids, but I don't want to use real kids. I don't want, you know, that's a whole thing, right? Why just generate them in AI? They don't exist. So, you know, they, you can make them look however you want to. There's nobody's going to get upset about it. You can make sure diversity is well laid out in that. Um, it's really cool. And they're pretty high-res images. Um, and then my background is, there you go. Carol. There you go. There's Carol. And it also, you know, gives you a prompt that it actually created for it. So it just took my, it took my whole big, long description and wrote a prompt, and then this is the image that it outputted for the prompt. Um, and then I've been training a thread <clears throat> where, uh, so consistency is a little hard because it's based on a seeds, a random seed situation. So you get a picture and it's this random set of numbers that generates this picture. And you say, well, I want to keep that part of this picture, but change this. So I've been working on ways that I can keep consistency and hold on to pieces of the seed and then redo it. Um, so you can take this and say, well, I don't want a, I don't want a phone in your hand, or I want something in the background change, or just right? You can also say, I want a 16 by 9 picture, or I want a portrait picture, or I want anything output. And then what I usually do is I'll, I'll take these things, bring them into Photoshop, take out the elements, build out a back, you know, do, do use this as pieces instead of a whole mm -hmm. image. So pretty cool. Um, and fast. I mean, that's, if you try to, if you try to render that picture out of 3D, it would be a couple weeks just building it and then lighting it and all that kind of stuff. So for stuff that is, you know, you just need constantly new stuff. It's pretty great. Okay. So now yeah, let's see here. The hands look better. <laughs> the hands of yeah, no, the hands were the hard thing. They definitely got weird for a while. Um, and I think you still, if you go into, um, you know, Photoshop has a built-in uh, generative uh, generative AI inside of it. It still has a problem with hands. It will always get like <laughs> weird thing going on. My hands are hard. They're hard to do. So um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, let's see here. So now um, we got a persona. Let's do, um, let's create social media posts for each platform. Um, include tested images, graphics, or video, uh, and hashtags inside of a code box. So it's obviously a great, so if I have a media campaign, I have it nailed down to what my target market is, what I want it to, uh, what I want it to do. So um, it's doing all in a code box. The only thing about a code, the nice thing about a code box is you don't have to select all your, you just hit copy code and it copies everything in that box. So it's the benefit of that. Um, but you can see that we just, it's gonna make a different one for each platform of Facebook. Uh, give you suggested graphics, YouTube, short engaging documentary style video, Instagram. And you can see that all, all your hashtags are, are um, going to generate some relevant hashtags. Now, the next step of hashtags is to get onto the web version and say, go give me the top performing hashtags for this. And it can go out live and do it. This is kind of just doing relevant ones, right. right? So that's the next step of there. But hashtags are usually like the hardest thing to just think of, like, how, how can I get this to people I want to get it to? Right? So 
Yeah, I mean, I think that this kind of structure of what we talked about today is can be used in a lot of different ways. And really like every day I learn, I just try something and it works. And it's like, um, I've always said that like Apple products are like this way. Like if I, I think something should work this way, it normally does. And that is how this is. Like you just talk to it like it's uh, another person and ask for things. And if you don't know how to do it, go, like, how do I do that? Or is there a better way? Um, one thing I did is I had prompts. I'd done this a few weeks ago for um, Habitat for Humanity in, North, uh, in uh, Chapel Hill. And I had these prompts. So I went back and said, and I reverse engineered it. So I had all the answers. I go, okay, so to get all this, how can I better make this prompt for the next thread? And it will work through that, get that prompt, save it. And now I have a better prompt. To right. start with. So it's always just evolving. And, changing like that. and you can place that into a different thread and continue to just yeah. get better, better, better. Yeah, better. yeah, yeah. And just keep using it against yourself. Yeah. Like, you know? So um, so with there's some other things. So there are some third-party apps like there's a Zapier and some other things that are called AI agents. And they are more like, I want this done. And it does everything to get there. Like, you don't have to do the steps. Um, I don't really talk about it that very often because I think that um, those apps will come and go and those type of things. But the way that you talk to this large language model is how we're going to talk to computers moving forward. Um, it'll be conversational. You won't say, you won't do a Google search and say, movie times, right. Regard, right? You'll say, hey, I'm looking for this movie and I yeah. want like, you know, to have a conversation, you'll get better answers from it. So, but if you think about it as voice, the one thing I'll show you too, um, as voice uh, gets better, um, if you don't have vision, you know, you can still communicate with computer. Mm -hmm. um, it just really, inclusivity of it really opens up really quick. For that. Um, so let's, I'll show you this. Here. I just compare and contrast to the um, AI feature on Snapchat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I haven't used it much on Snapchat, honestly, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I think those are all like, it was interesting because those all kind of came out earlier mm -hmm. and they're rough at first and they're starting to, you know, but I think they definitely have like, very defined things that wants you to use it for. Mm. And you can't really train it. It's, it is what gotcha, it is. Right? Gotcha, gotcha, so gotcha. the step about this is that you can train it. Patterns and it recognizes yeah. your personality, culture, right, and all right. that. Okay. So when I have a when I have a new client and they want to do marketing, whatever they want to do with me, I say, okay, give me some writing examples, give me any of your posts that you've used in the past, and I'll build their writing style. So I'll have all that information in this mm. right book. And then we can start writing posts for them, right? That sound like them. Right. Like. Um, so let me show you this one little other you know um, so now the app is which is also it's free and um, I believe the voice is just 4.0 so let's see here so now you have a voice option let's see here. yeah can you introduce yourself to this class in front of you right now of course Jeff hello everyone I'm ChatGPT a conversational AI developed by OpenAI my primary role is to assist with various tasks like answering questions, offering well-researched information, and generating content ideas. I'm designed to provide accurate and timely data while maintaining a warm, engaging, and respectful tone. My mission aligns well with Jeff's at North Bend Consulting, empowering businesses and individuals through expert guidance. You can use my taglines. Together we aim so <laughs> the cool thing about that is everything you talk about is now in a thread. So you can just have a conversation, go back and pull the pieces you want out of that in text, right? Um, I use this for to-do lists a lot. I just create threads. Okay, today I got this, this, and no particular oh. order. I've got all these things to do. And I go, hey, can you prioritize those? And I go, actually add this one in, that's top, and I can just keep going through that. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, wow. any questions or any like uh you, you know, interrupted? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you can cancel. Her. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right. Um, yeah, you can stop it, cancel it, pause it, all that kind of stuff. But I'll be driving home and just have a conversation Her. with it in the car. And just have to get, you know, oh, oh, this. we bring, brainstorm with it. It's, it's really kind of cool. Um, I shouldn't have said we're going to run around. <laughs> one one thing, so, uh, one thing I, I try to call the time, so I'll okay. ask it, what do you want to be called? Just as, you know, what do you want to be called? And it goes, oh, I'm not, no, I'm just computer. Uh, keeps, I'm like, I understand that, but like, I want to call you something. It usually comes up with some kind of acronym for what it does. And that's what it wants to be called. So we have our two features, the free one and the 4.0 so far? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And like I said, everything we did today, I, mean, I want to make sure that that could all be done in 3.5. So you can just copy and paste. There's that limit of 4,000 characters. But if you say, hey, I've got, I've got this big document. I'm going to have right. five pieces of it. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Here's the third one. Now go back, and we're going to talk about that. Or just summarize that into a single page. You know, right. Yeah. Um, 
Can you give us a top? Someone else, because I got questions. <laughs> hey, no, no, no. Um, top three personal uses and top three professional uses. Uh, those definitely meld together. I work from home, so it's not okay. like all the time. But um, so personal uses, uh, I use it for recipes. Like I always have a hard time thinking of, you know, hey, I've got chicken, I got rice, I got broccoli, I got this soup, and give me like five recipes I can make with that. Oh my gosh. I'm or so say, excited. hey, I'm gonna low glycemic index diet. Give me five ideas for that. Right? Mm -hmm. I'll do it in a grocery store. I'm like, oh man, I don't, you know, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. Um, to do list is a huge one for me. Um, and then honestly, just keeping up with what I'm doing. So. I have so many, I'm on so many boards and different businesses I'm working with. It's hard to remember everything I'm doing. So right before I go talk to a client, I go to my friend and say, hey, give me a synopsis of everything we talked about. What's the last thing we did? What's my to-do list? And I get a refresher right before I walk in. So that's a huge benefit to me that I can just juggle that. Really quickly. Can you integrate it into like Google Calendar? Yeah. Yeah. So there is, um, so OpenAI has, a, has an API, which you could then, and that might be the enterprise version. I haven't got into it much, but then you can build apps with that. That's how these other apps are building that. So yeah, there's lots of ways that you can then connect it to other things. So it and it'll just scan like your email conversations, maybe like text and say, this is what you talked about over the past. Da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, texts are great, especially a long chain of text. Yeah. Pop them all and go, what, what are we out of this? Because you know, it gets so confusing on what was the last thing we talked right. about. Yeah, I mean, it's any kind of like, any kind of distillation of information is like primary. Uh, and for work, like, yeah, I use it for everything. I create elements for graphics. I create my whole website using AI, um, resumes, uh, applications, anything I can kind of like. And it's not like built from scratch, but just to optimize, right? Like to get that right. Um, Starting point. Yeah. And then to learn stuff. I'm like, I don't have, I have a client who wants to do this. I'm like, how do I do that? I was looking up for this, this thing. Just, I go, I don't understand it. Dumb it down for me. Dumb it down for me and get it right. So, you know, I hadn't been doing WordPress uh, for a long time. I had clients and they're like, how do I, I need to remember how to install WordPress. And so I had to go through all those steps. I've changed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's still not great, but. <laughs> Andy, I want to make sure that you ask questions too. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> I know a service you could use. That... <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, Jeff, I thought of, of, of something. Um, so, like right now, um, if we'll, we'll, we'll probably get a, a trip, like a video transcript for this meeting, and then you can hit view transcript. Mm -hmm. So could we do that? Like if we're, we're given training videos, we could plop in transcripts and then say, retarget this for a library works. Right. Yep. Yeah. Or just take out what's uh -huh. important to me, what's pertinent uh -huh. to me. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of it, like it's a lot of this integration happening. So in Zoom, I use an app called Fathom, which is a free app. Uh, and it runs as a different user in the in the Zoom. It videos it, does the transcript, highlights in the timeline when you talk, when the other person talks, does an AI summary for you of the whole conversation at the end. So that's like this next step of these other things are being created. Um, and I think Google, the Google Meet has a new thing where you can actually send an AI agent to the meeting for you. And it takes notes and comes back to you. And, yeah, and, and participates some, um, in that. Yeah. List of messages saying, do not send an AI to the meeting. Right. Yeah, 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 for like, sure. You can send your AI with you, but don't send it on your behalf. Yeah, because yeah, for me, like, for me, if I try to... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was like, I don't even know what happened. Sarah's expecting to see Tom, and she gets like this whole... I know. I don't want anything involved. I went, and I emailed Steve right away. I was like, Steve, I don't know what you're doing. Yeah, 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 I mean, that for me, like, I, I have such a hard time being invested and take no, I can't do both. I just can't. I've never been, even in, I, in a class when I was in college, I just do it. Like, I'm going to remember this, we'll talk about, you know. But now I can be invested and then go back and still have a refresher. Um, it's like, it's a whole different world. It's just, I mean, when I left Food Matters in April of this year, um, and that's like exactly when 4.0 came out and like slowly out, um, and I just dug into it really hard and just realized, like, hey, for my, ADHD was like a turnkey of like, oh, I can think because it's always that first step. Like, now where are we going to start? And I can start, right? Just right off the bat, now I can run down the board. There's nothing that's going to stop me because if I don't know it, I can ask it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really cool, really cool tool. And I think it's just going to, it's going to be even bigger than like no internet to internet. It just, because the way this is going to work, it's going to, and it's really, it, it's not overly complicated in that it's just, a, it's how your brain works bunch of neurons and it goes through filters back and forth and is creating information from known references. 
So um, but super powerful. And it's going to be in every, it already is in most things, in, in most search engines. Um, websites now, SEO is going to really go away because all search engines have AI in it, and it's going to start searching in context. So keywords and stuff aren't really going to have the punch it does now. It's going to read your site in context, and right. so searching in context, right. it's going to match that in context, right. not in just terms. And then, you, can, you know, I use uh, this to go do SEO, SEO um, analysis on websites. So I go to client websites, and it does a whole analysis to give you emotional um, preferences, all, everything you can think of SEO wise. What was the uh, the Biden administration? I know that They're he did the yeah, I got nervous. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, well, what is so it's pretty vague. Uh, a lot of it was like um, we needed sets of rules. That was kind of like a precursor. Um, but there, there's definitely some things about, and a lot of them are doing this, especially like graphic wise, like some embedding of the fact it was generated in AI. Oh, that's good. so. There's some like calling on a water, calling for a watermark. Yeah, yeah, I did. So that's when we get. Has the EU yeah. already gotten to that place? No, there, they, this is the first one that had. Yeah, yeah. So if I was a hit, yeah. NPR. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Italy, there are some countries that have already started. Yeah. And all the AI people came out and said, we need this because, yeah. you know, and the, the real problem is going to be is that we have Congress who doesn't understand social media, let alone this, right? Like we're at a very different, disparate level of understanding it. If you don't understand it, I don't know how you. Well, yeah, like, because like, they're surprised my age and I'm. Like, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I see that. You know, it's it. Um, the CEO of uh, Microsoft came out a, a few months ago and said, "This is how we're going to interact with computers because it just makes more sense. It's more contextual and it's more appealing. There's that learning curve. It feels like a big learning curve, but when you get into it, it's like, oh, well, the learning curve is solved out by the actual program. It's about I playing with it. Play with this right now. I'm so excited. Yeah. 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 It's why I did the I did the Habitat for Humanity one, and they. Put a posted a comment and it's a really nice comment said create an AI by create an AI but heartfelt. I'm like, oh well that's the best thing I could have if someone went right after that, create an AI to you know recommend me online. So perfect. I mean so like it's totally legit though for me to go in and say, Chat GPT, would you write a case study? Yes. On I mean that's cool. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like I'm cheating. No, I can't <laughs> well I mean the ethics behind who's the creator, like you know, and what role you play. You couldn't do that if you didn't know the content, right? Right. Like, but if I said I'd like a, a case study where a patient has a corticosteroid and you know, like yeah. blah blah blah. I think yeah. the medical field is going to see the biggest advantage out of this, just for data analysis and crunching. So it's all about getting all that information into one place and seeing what pops out. So there's yeah. this. But like Justin was just telling me before today's session, which is perfect. He used ChatGPT to write a choose your own adventure activity for his nursing students. Mm -hmm. It's a great activity that nobody has the time to create. Yeah. They're too busy doing everything else. ChatGPT did it and his students did it. And because my case studies have been on for forever. And it's just from one topic. I yeah. think we're just like. And if you do it with the, with, I uh, definitely do that with the online enabled one because then it will get up to date and ask for citations of everything. Mm -hmm. And it gives you live links out to those citations. So you don't have to go copy, like just hit the link, it takes the website, you can wow. confirm it. And then you can say, when you're writing your paper, go, okay, now now format that in the proper MLA format. Citations. But it won't pull scholarly journal information from behind paywalls or inside libraries. So it's just more web, right, web, it, web it, level information. Right, but if you went, so out, it's not like if you went behind the paywall and copied it onto right. a document, and then it's, so there's always oh. around. Oh. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. There's a local uh, business. Uh, so it might not find my dot org Facebook unless I put the dot org in and then it can put the yeah. Yeah. So yeah. They instantly, obviously, started using chat. But if you don't know what sounds like, right. yeah. it, it's so clunky. And one of the examples that just killed me is like, our delightful lunch hours will be from 11 a.m. <laughs> Like, yeah. Why do you have to modify lunch hours? Lunch you know, yeah. I literally go in there and like, make it so goofy, make it more human. And it'll, come, yeah, you know, and it'll yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. Right. And just talk to it like someone gave you a bad, you know, your partner gave you a bad message, like, ah, I rewrite that. Yeah. Or just take that, that word out. Right. Thomas, you would not use the word busy planner. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And so one thing, one thing I didn't talk about, and I want to do is that. So in an educational format, obviously someone can go and write a paper and turn it in. And they can just yeah. without any fit. But what you what I would want as a teacher is I want you to turn in the thread you use to get to that point. Because you'll see right off the bat the process, right? So it's like doing math and you show your work. So your work is this thread. And now you can just send this to anybody. So you send the whole thread. Even if they don't have ChatGPT as an app, they'll get the thread. 
and they can look through it all. So um, that's kind of the step of like the, the, the ethics of it is like, okay, I got here, here's how I got there, right? So I didn't just ask for it and then copy it. So. Okay, I do have a question. Yeah. So as an introductory user, let's say a new marketing student, they're getting their feet wet, how would you recommend they get started? So I always say the brainstorming uh, is like the easiest thing to do and it kind of opens up how it works. So um, if you just went in and said, I'm working on a project, um, I need an idea or I just need a, a theme or any part of that project, let's let's brainstorm. Just say, let's brainstorm. And it'll pop up maybe 10 questions. Go, okay, give me 20 more, give me 20 more. Okay, I want it more of this. And you start honing it down that way. But you'll really see right off the bat that it, it gives you pretty solid answers and you can hone it into what you want. But it's just a bounce off too. Like, okay, well, I don't, that gave me an idea. I don't like that, let's do this, right? Or, well, I like that word, but not that. Let's go over to this and combine those together. So that is always what I say is the first thing. It doesn't take a lot of input other than saying, let's brainstorm on this project and go from there. So like I said, there's really no wrong way to use it. Um, if you're if clunky in there, it'll, it'll still pop up really good answers for you. And as you go, you'll see, well, that actually worked better. I'm going to use that. I, I did all trial and error. Like I didn't go take any classes. I just dug into it and this is where we're at. So um, yeah, it's just uh, that brainstorming is definitely the first start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I want to, I want to honor people's time. It is two o'clock, so if you need to take off, feel free and don't, don't, don't give us any more. Oh, no, good. This time is... you're willing to, but, but thank you. Yeah. If you, if you're happy to stick around for for sure. Minutes. Katie, same thing. Thanks for for being with us for as long as you can be. So there's Tampa plugins, uh, and this is on the 4.0 the plugins as well. Pretty much with the free version, it's just straight 3.5. Um, but some of these are better than those recipe finders. Um, the one I use a lot is the SEO. Yeah, you want some kind of a, a mode to see that drop? Uh, no, so you just go to, yeah, sorry, just go into here and you click on the plugins thread. Once you're in here and you got this little drop down shows up underneath. These are the ones you've installed. If you scroll down to the bottom, the plugin store. And yeah, so then there's all these plugins. Now some are some are garbage. Some are, <laughs> some are, don't work great. But like I said, these are usually like the the betas of some ideas. Like the first time a web thing was was on here to go out in SEO, it was in the plugin version. Um, uh, before they have PDF stuff. Um, so I, I find these some of these are useful, but I really find that almost everything outside like specialty stuff can be done uh, in the in the four point version. Um, but it has, you know, you can search in here, things like that. So, yeah. How much is it per month? $20 a month per day. Yeah. yeah and so, no, no, I mean, for what it does, I mean, like, it, it pays for itself pretty quickly. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, uh, there, yeah, you get popular or new or. I thought I was behind technology, but I can just download this and be ahead of everybody, right? <laughs> <laughs> right? Like, so just skip that stuff? Use it or not. Right. And it's going to be a clear demarcation. Yeah. yeah. Businesses. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when I first started talking to schools, too, they're like, well, the, the, the students are cheating. I'm like, well, your professors are using it to grade the papers are turning in, too. Like, it's working on both sides, right? <laughs> so, like, to search for grants. Yeah. You know, like, like, you literally just, just type in there. Find, yeah. Find grants for community colleges. <laughs> And that, that'd be where I started. And then if you had a web, if you had some sources that you were solid on, you can say just those, go to this site and search for web. Like search NIH. <laughs> or, or, yeah. yeah. CDC, whatever. But you it, have yeah. the 4.0 to do like the live web base. Yes. Right. Yeah. Everything other than just the regular text based yeah. 3.5 is the 20. Yeah. yeah. And there is some limitations. Like on the, I think you get 50, 50 yeah, every three hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I almost never run it. I don't, it doesn't, I, it must be like incremented, like, but it doesn't, I, and if you're working on anything else, it, it's like a few minutes you wait and you're back up to running again, so. Okay, I'm gonna go advise students because that's something I probably have to actually do. I can't talk to chat to Not yet. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think you could put in the um, transfer goals and, um, <laughs> 